the Stuart 7A model steam plant at part 24, making an extension for the original chimney. Why would I want to do that? The chimney seems OK. Ideal if the boiler was going to be fitted inside a model boat, but for a freestanding model steam plant it's just too short. I had a quick look through my box of copper tubes and I didn't have one the right size. So I phoned Blackgate's engineering, spoke to Jackie and the very next morning this arrived in the post. And once again it's time to play pass the parcel with myself and I look forward to winning this time. No swords or Danish war axe to open this package. Just a simple craft knife, which is not very sharp, but more than sharp enough to cut my fingers. A quick health and safety warning, if you're opening a package with a craft knife, please be careful. So what's inside? Oh, another package. This is just like past the parcel. Eventually I get it down to two packages. And finally, when I open the first package, it contains a piece of copper tubing. Now it's time to open the second one and see what's in there. And yes, it's another piece of copper tubing. Why do I need two pieces? Is this panic buying in a time of lockdown? No, I bought two pieces of copper tubing because one is exactly the same size as the existing chimney, which has an outside diameter of one and a quarter inches, and the other piece of copper tubing has an outside diameter of one and three eighths of an inch, but an inside diameter of one and a quarter inches, so this should slide over the existing chimney perfectly. The pieces of copper tubing are far too long, the chimney would be very tall if I fitted them without cutting them. This chimney is from my Stuart 504 boiler. It's actually slightly larger than 1 and 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. But it's not the width that I'm concerned with, it's the length, said a girlfriend to me many years ago. If I position the Stuart 504 chimney as shown, and then measure it, it measures 7 and a half inches. I don't mean down to the exhaust inlet fitting, I mean down to the main flue tube. All I need to do now is cut the piece of copper tube to length. In case you're wondering why I bought the other piece of copper tubing, which is an inch and a quarter in diameter, I just wanted to show an alternative way of extending an existing chimney. If we use this piece of tubing, all I need is a brass ring to fit inside the existing chimney to sit the new one on top. But alas, I would find the join between the two pieces of copper tubing in a very visible place to be a bit offensive to my eye. So I'm going to use the other piece of copper tubing which should just slide down the existing chimney. But it doesn't. A simple reason for this, there is a burr all the way round where it was cut on the bandsaw. And a simple fix. I use one of these. Every workshop should have one. It's a deburring tool. I just run it round the inside edge of the tube. Then it was a nice sliding fit on the existing chimney. The exhaust inlet fitting is a bit of a problem though. I have two choices. I can mill a slot in the new tube, which would then allow the tube to slide over the fitting and reach the bottom. By the bottom, I mean the flue tube. I think I'm going to remake this entire exhaust arrangement. I don't like it. It's just a double union that pushes into a hole in the chimney with a silver soldered pipe that points up the chimney. And this is really not a good thing for a gas fired boiler. If the exhaust pipe is short and at the bottom of the chimney, when the engine is running at a high speed, the blast of the exhaust coming up the chimney is likely to suck the flame off the ceramic burner. I've seen this many times. Exhaust blast pipes and blowers are essential for coal-fired boilers but not required for gas-fired boilers. Although, in some circumstances, a very mild, controllable steam blower blowing a jet of steam up the chimney can help with complete combustion of the gas, which is often a problem in centre flue boilers. With the fitting removed, the new chimney tube slides all the way to the bottom. Well, it would do if there wasn't a burr on the hole that's drilled in the original chimney. That was a simple fix, just remove it with a file and try again. Once I'd done that, the outer tube slid very smoothly all the way down to the bottom. It doesn't look good though where it meets the flue tube. The bottom part of the new chimney needs shaping to fit the flue tube. I'm marking it with a felt tip pen just as a starting point. There's more than one way to shape the bottom of this tube. I could use a fly cutter, but there's a really simple way of doing it, starting by removing the guard from the top of my one inch belt sander, which is very conveniently round. Health and safety warnings wear eye protection and hold on tightly to the tube. There are many things wrong with this clip. What am I doing wrong? Well, first of all, 
My one inch belt sander is not mounted to the bench, it's freestanding so I can move it around. But of course the belt sander's moving around if I put too much pressure on the belt. Here's the progress so far and I'm going to finish it off on my four inch belt sander. And I've moved the one inch belt sander closer to the four inch belt sander so I can use the table to rest the tube on because it was just about exactly the right height. So don't forget when doing a job like this eye protection is essential and hold on to the piece of tube really firmly. Once I'd finished shaping the end of the chimney I just deburred it on the one inch belt sander. Back in the main workshop and once again I'm using the deburring tool to clean up the inside edge of the chimney. Even though I say so myself, I did guess the size about right. The only problem is there's a fillet of silver solder which stops the chimney from going all the way down and I need a little bit more off this side. I marked the spot with the felt tip pen and this time I'm going to do it in a different way by using a drum sander fitted in my small Bosch electric drill. This is a very coarse 80 grit drum sander. Once again it's important to wear eye protection. Finally, after considerable trial and error, the new chimney is a good fit on the flue tube. And it's now time to cut the chimney to the correct length, which is 7.5 inches. After I cut the tube to length, I used the set square to just make sure the end of it was square, and it was. I carefully cleaned up the cut end of the chimney on the belt sander. And some viewers may be thinking, well, why not just put it in the lathe chuck and turn the end of the tube square? Well, there's a couple of reasons why I'm not going to do this. With a piece of soft copper tubing sticking so far out of a chuck, the minute that the cutting tool touches it, if it was rotating, it would all mangle up and crush and fall to bits and drop into the chip tray. This piece of copper tubing is the offcut. It's not the main chimney, which is a lot longer. You could turn up a piece of wood to be a very tight plug to go in the end of the tube, then centre drill it and use a centre, or you can use a scrap piece of brass. First of all, face across the front of the piece of brass and then drill it deeply with a centre drill. This piece of brass is a fairly tight fit in the tube, which is a good thing. If it wasn't, you'd have to reduce the diameter until it fitted the tube. The next thing to do is to deburr the end of the tube using the deburring tool. For the next part of the job, I would simply use some Loctite 603 to stick the plug into the end of the tube. And once the Loctite 603 had cured, Fit the life center into the tailstock to support the job. Then you can take some light facing cuts on the copper and get a perfect square finish. You could also turn the outer diameter if you wanted to using this method because the piece of copper tubing, even though it's stuck out of the chuck a very long way, it's firmly supported by the life center. That's about it for this episode. And on Friday the 10th of April 2020, I'd just like to say in these strange times, stay safe, stay well, Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.